It's always a joy and privilege to celebrate an Easter Mass. This year, in lockdown exile from our church building, it focuses our attention very sharply on what truly matters. The Kingdom of God which Jesus preached and for which he died and rose again, that we might follow him into new life. With you, I look forward with great anticipation to our release from this exile. But, meanwhile, we rejoice, as we always do, by offering the only act of worship which Jesus commanded us to make. And so, on this greatest feast of the Christian year, our celebration of the glorious resurrection of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, from the dead, as we prepare to offer the holy sacrifice of his body and blood, which he gave us before his passion, and in thanksgiving for the eternal life to which he invites us all, let us call to mind and acknowledge our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with the living bread. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra pax omnibus, bone voluntatis, laudamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, glorificamus te, Gratia sagimus tibi, propter maniam gloriam tuam. Domine Deus, rex celestis, te eus pater omnipotens, Domine Filii unigenite, Domine Deus, 
countryside of Judea and in Jerusalem itself, and also to the fact that they killed him by hanging him on a tree. Yet, three days afterwards, God raised him to life and allowed him to be seen not by the whole people, but only by certain witnesses God had chosen beforehand. Now we are those witnesses. We have eaten and drunk with him after his resurrection from the dead. And he has ordered us to proclaim this to his people and to tell them that God has appointed him to judge everyone, alive or dead. It is to him that all the prophets bear this witness, that all who believe in Jesus will have their sins forgiven through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response to the psalm. This day was made by the Lord, we rejoice and are glad. This day was made by the Lord, we rejoice and are glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, his love has no end. This day was made by the Lord, we rejoice and are glad. The Lord's right hand has triumphed, his right hand raised me up. I shall not die, I shall live, and recount his deeds. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. A reading from the letter of St Paul to the Colossians. Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven, where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on things that are on the earth, because you have died, and now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ is revealed, and he is your life, you too will be revealed in all your glory, with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christians to the Paschal victim, offer your thankful praises. I love the sheep I deemeth, Christ who only is sinless, reconciled sinners to the Father. 
Der that life hath contended, he that combats to pendants, the prince of life who died reigns immortal. Speak, Mary, declaring what thou sowest wayfaring, the tomb of Christ who is living, the glory of Jesus' resurrection. Bright angels attesting, the shroud and napkin resting. Yea, Christ may hope his enemies are risen, to Galilee he goes before you. Happy they who bear the witness, Mary's word believing. Christ indeed from death is risen, are you life obtaining? If you have carried him away, 
Tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When talking to children at school at this time of year, I sometimes used to ask them, which is more important, Christmas or Easter? They usually said Christmas, which isn't surprising if you compare the secular celebrations of the two festivals. If I insisted that Easter is more important, at least one child always replied, but you couldn't have Easter without Christmas. Having foolishly asked the question in the first place, I then had to find an effective way to explain that without Easter, the miracle of Christmas would not get us to heaven. If you've successfully negotiated that conversation, you probably have a Lambeth degree in theology. But it isn't a competition between the two. Christmas has a broad and instant appeal, in part because it seems very easy to understand, doesn't it? The core story, at least, is easy. The birth of a child to poor parents. A child who grows up to be someone special. That much we can all get. It's the stuff of biography, history, popular storytelling. The detail of it, the word-made-flesh bit, is not so easy. But we all quickly understand that it describes God becoming one of us, getting inside our skin, in solidarity with us. If we believe that, we are not far from the Kingdom of Heaven. Easter clearly wouldn't mean what it does without that happening first. Easter would be just another life of Brian, a tragic mistake, a death of a kind that still happens far too often, the sort of death that was especially common under the Roman Empire but is still with us today. This would then be the story of a great spiritual teacher in a remote imperial province who got mixed up in a toxic clash of secular and religious politics and was executed as an act of political expediency. But if we've processed the inner meaning of Christmas, the incarnation, God so close to us that you can't see the join, then the crucifixion takes on a new and particular horror. People were so busy with religion, politics, and the politics of religion, that they failed to recognise God, which of course also still happens. But in this case, they tortured and killed him. The sequel which we celebrate this morning is not as easy even to tell as the Christmas story. You realise that as soon as you read the four Gospel accounts. But you can't untangle the significance of one from the other. It's all one glorious and elegant narrative in which God gets completely involved, insanely and generously involved with his human creation. 
and it appears to go horribly wrong, like a classic tragedy. But then God breaks open the champagne and shares the party with everyone. There is a grave seriousness, but also a lively divine joyfulness about the outcome, a joy that breaks all the rules. We do not just drink champagne, though, so we must do that today if we have any. We also break Easter eggs. We know that breaking them in order to enjoy them is a parable of Christ's breaking out of the tomb, leaving death behind. If you ask, could Easter happen without Christmas, or does Christmas have meaning without Easter? You quickly see that they're inseparably bound up together. But if you ask a different question, what's the crucial piece of the jigsaw for Christian faith, especially in times of difficulty like this one? What is it that makes a difference to each one of us? I think there's no contest. St Paul gives an unequivocal answer. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. Christmas shows God getting involved with us, showing us how much he loves us by drawing near to us, accessing human life in all its vulnerability. The cross shows him taking that vulnerability seriously, courageously refusing to dodge his solidarity with us. But Easter, even when we can't adequately describe it, shows him flipping that over and offering each of us access to glory, to the life of God, the life which is eternal, full and rich and free from fear. Each of us has a shell of sin and sadness, of failure, disappointment and defeat. It usually gets thicker and thicker as we grow older. And if we aren't careful, it can become an impenetrable carapace to God and to other people. The good news of Easter is that Christ, once and for all, for all of us, broke out of that shell and became the living first fruits of the harvest of all our lives. And there is that hope for all. Among the carvings in the 9th century abbey of Vézelay in Burgundy, you can see a carved stone relief, graphically depicting the death by hanging of Judas Iscariot. Beside it is a carving of the risen Christ, tenderly carrying the corpse of Judas to paradise. You don't need a theology degree to get that point. Examining ourselves in the looking glass of Easter, we can begin to see how sin and sadness, failure, disappoint, defeat and fear do not have the last word in our lives, even in these strange times. We are loved. We have a future. We need to share that news with those who haven't woken up to it yet. And of course, Chocolate, champagne or even Prosecco always help. At this point in the Easter liturgy, we reaffirm the vows made for us at our baptism and reaffirmed by us at our confirmation in place of the creed. It's a baptismal renewal and so at the end of this, there will be sung the Vidyakram, the Easter anthem, which tells of the saving waters coming from the temple, which is Christ's body. You should have a text of this on your screen, but the answer to the questions is, I do. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan 
I do. And all his works, I do. And all his empty show, I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? I do. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for ever. Pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with pastoral gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wonder wondrously reborn and nourished, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day above all, to lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the beautiful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with the College of Bishops and all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Grant us peace. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Let us pray. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Sí, bro.
Hey! 